Welcome, everybody. This is Dawn Weatherwax from uh, Sports Nutrition to Go and Food for Speed podcast. And today we have this awesome football player in front of me. And uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Michael Markley, uh, class of 2025, middle linebacker at Lakota West High School. Wonderful. Micah, welcome, because we've been working together um, for almost a year now. So tell me what brought you in to the office? Um, so I, when I was playing football, I would cramp a lot and, uh, I just wanted to be a better, you know, me and become more athletic and just, uh, put on some lean weight, get stronger. So kind of go into that cramping because not everybody experiences that cramping issue. Um, so when I was playing, uh, I was drinking a ton of water and it's all about balance. You have to get some salt in there and, um, even just your diet, you know, it can always make you cramp. So. I wanted to figure out what the balance was for me, and uh, Dawn helped me find that. Balance. He sweats a lot, I sweat right? A ton. He sweats a ton, sweat which a, ton. a lot of athletes do. Um, and so, like, like you mentioned, right, forcing lots of water down, drink, drink, drink. Mm -hmm. But if we just drink water, dilutes yeah. the sodium. So you need the sodium along with hydration. Yes. And um, he needs a lot of salt. So we figure that mixture out. And do you cramp that much anymore? Nope. I hardly cramp now. Yeah, and you were during that also because it was game time. It was game time, yeah, but the rest of the season, I didn't have any problems with it once, you know, I started to find that balance. Yeah, because just so the viewers out there, this is an athlete where he would come, he was cramping during the game, and this school is very good, and you're going into playoffs, and yeah. you're you're going, I cannot be cramping yes. in the middle of these games. We know what that means. So um, to have that solution, you guys, it's usually knowing your hydration and uh, enough sodium. All right. You came in. What was the game plan? You, you oh, Well, let me do this. When you're, what did you think, honestly, when you left here, uh, when you left the doors about coming in for the session? Because we did your body comp. We did the muscle sound to see the fuel in your muscle. We measured your metabolism. You know, we also looked at your hydration and sodium, but. What in your mind were you thinking when you left here about this? Um, I knew it was a lot. Um, honestly, my mind was racing. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, we talked about and all that. But I was also really excited because I knew things were going to start clicking and um, I was going to start getting better. So, yeah. Because, yeah, because you're a linebacker. You want to put on lean weight. Mm -hmm. You're working really hard. Yep. So what ended up happening? Uh, or what has happened so far? We're not done, right? He's going to keep going. But what's happened so far uh, for this process? I started with 169 pounds of lean muscle, and now I'm at 185 pounds of lean muscle. I started at 18% body fat, and now I'm at 13% body fat. So my body's changing. I feel better. I look different. And it's just, it's been great so far. Yeah. And you've been going to some of these camps and. I've been going to a lot of camps. I've been to about <laughs> six, I think. <laughs> and like and how, what's happened? You know, some. Con some concerns are basically, well, I want to get bigger. That's in quotes, right? Yeah. We really want to get leaner. We want to get leaner by gaining lean weight, yeah. but we don't want to get just weight, right? Because that's yes. one of those where, okay, and I want to stay fast or I want to get faster. faster what faster. happened with uh, some of your testing and um, so last year, to be honest, I was a little slow. I was slow. And with losing the body fat and um, getting leaner, I've gotten so much faster. All my numbers have gone down. I've gotten stronger. I've gotten quicker side to side and forward. I've just, you know, I've gotten a lot faster and stronger and more athletic since I since I started. And that's pretty neat to have that happen when you show up to these camps. Yes. Plus, how did it change how you felt out there from where you started to now just physically out there? I feel a lot better. Um, There was times where my legs felt dead and like they were really heavy. But um, the more I eat the right foods and all that, I feel more energetic and I feel stronger. And my legs have been, felt good and light. Yeah. And then because you're one that I we've worked literally more towards the end of the football season how did you feel different in the third and fourth quarters did you uh, notice a difference yeah because I would always come out first and second quarter I'd feel great and then third and fourth quarters when I would start to cramp up a little bit or start to feel dead but as I started eating better and then finding that that good balance um 
is when third and fourth quarter, I felt the strong, um, you know, I felt strong and I felt good. Because, so. yeah, and then you're in the third, fourth quarter, that's – Yeah. You guys had some re- – yeah, it's a really insanely close, close games. We did. And, you know, those last two quarters are very important in every game. Doesn't matter what the score is. The last two quarters are always important. So yeah. we had to make sure we were at our best yeah. when we were going out there. And this definitely helped a ton. Because, again, too, calorically, I don't even remember roughly how many calories or fuel you were eating. Yeah, but I'm not sure, it's but definitely got, I don't know, at least another 1,500 calories. At, actually, least, at, at least. least. Yeah. So listen to that, folks. He's, he's now we're fighting 4,500 calories. Mm-hmm. We're going to be tipping the scale at 5,000. Mom and dad have to, had to get another job just to feed this kid. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shouts out to mom and dad, because mm-hmm. let me tell you, especially mom, she's been doing a lot of work. So helping support you. All right. Walk me through a day of what you used to eat, if you can remember that. And yeah. then walk the viewers through a day of what you eat now. So um, when I first started, um, my sister, who also went through Dawn, always made fun of me because I would never, you know, I would never eat the food she was eating. She was, she was big into nutrition, so I would get made fun of at, at, at the house. But once I started, or so I'd eat chips, and I, you know, I just didn't eat good at all. I mean, chips, like what all the other. What would you eat for eats. breakfast? Would for you breakfast. eat breakfast? Eat breakfast? No, I ate breakfast, but I'd eat. Um, I don't know, fatty cereals, like some cinnamon toast crunch and that kind of stuff. Um, school lunch, would you, what would you I would eat lunch? school lunch, which. I'm saying it's all bad there. Yeah, but school lunch is just not good. And then for dinner, um, I would eat, you know, I eat out a lot and I'd eat, you know, fatty foods, uh, fried foods. I'd eat just burgers and fries and I'd eat a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm sure it still tastes good. There's it, no doubt about oh, that, yeah, right? Yeah, it still tastes good. Uh, when you were in that mode and you see your sister eating that way, were you, before you came in here, Yeah. did you just think, wow, what were you thinking? Like, well, that's how I, what I need to do to put on weight or? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a big misconception and the, um, the football world is just like, eat, 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 eat. And I mean, you never really think about, okay, what do I need to eat? I would just eat because I knew going into a varsity football season, my first my first year playing varsity, I would have to gain some weight because there's a bunch of bigger dudes out there. I'd have to take on the O-line at line at linebacker. So I thought, okay, I got to gain some weight. So I just eat a bunch of fatty foods and uh, I gained weight, not the right weight though. So. <laughs> Which he's learned that that is uh, different. It's different. We want to gain lean lean weight and you'll and you'll be faster because you're still gaining the lean weight but we don't need to add lots of fat because that's definitely mm-hmm. not going to make you faster all right well the viewers are chomping at the bit they want to know what you eat now so literally walk us through a day of what you eat so what time would you eat breakfast I, I mean it depends on uh if i have practice or not if i if i have practice i eat breakfast around uh, seven o'clock and I, I'll have um, probably a, um, a wheat bread with uh, eggs, about two eggs, just uh, scrambled. And then I'll put some Canadian bacon on there. And I mean, that's a pretty good breakfast. Or I'll have some some yogurt, some Greek yogurt and granola, um, that kind of stuff. And so you would do that. The sandwich, would you have anything else with the sandwich? I'd have a protein shake and... Um, in my protein shake, I'd have uh, creatine and um, some collagen. Yep. yep. Any chia seeds in that? No, not yet. Not yet. All right. And then, um, and before he would eat sugary cereal. So sure. that's a huge, big difference. And the protein timing, right? Yep. Protein is huge throughout the day, not just in lump sums. Mm-hmm. Okay. When do you roughly eat again? I eat again around 12, right after practice. Okay. What do you have? Uh, for lunch, I'll usually have... Um, Another sandwich with protein bread or wheat bread, and I'll have either turkey, chicken, ham on there, Canadian bacon, um, and then uh, I'll have a banana, and then I'll have some, you know, carrots and guac. Nice. And I'll put some um, some olive oil on that, too, because that olive oil 
I mean, it doesn't really taste like much. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make it taste bad or anything. And it even tastes better and that gets some good fats in there. Yeah, because that's one I wouldn't even do that much. But, you know, at Subway, they've done that forever. Yeah. Right. They put the olive oil or the olive or the oil. I don't know if it's olive oil and vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess if I need to gain 20 pounds, I'll start putting olive oil on my yeah. sandwich, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's way different than lots of mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. right and fried foods yeah and then one big thing i do um if if i do need a little extra something on there i'll dip it just so that touches the tongue because um you don't need a bunch on there once it touches the tongue it, it'll get that taste in yeah it. so that's another misconception right yeah. you you don't have to eat dirt like everybody's scared to come see me because they yeah. think they're gonna have to give everything up you haven't had to give everything up no, i mean there's ton, there's a wide range of things i can still eat and um, it's still, it tastes good. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't even really crave the sugary things too much anymore. I still eat it sometimes, but just not as much. Yeah. And you probably eat out a couple times a week and. Yeah. When I eat out though, there's a big difference between getting grilled, grilled chickens and all that instead of breaded and fried and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it still tastes good. So. Yeah. And she, okay. So we, at lunch, we got that. When do you eat again? Um, I'll eat a snack in between maybe a protein bar or something and some strawberries or fruits and uh and then i can eat some more celery with with peanut butter or carrots with some guac what's the brand on that protein bar you like um uh, power crunch and then there's you know there's a bunch of different brands but power crunch is the big one that i eat a lot uh, yeah so if people haven't had power crunch it's this nice because it it's like ice cream cone thing right like vaporish with a layer of the protein in the middle but it looks like yeah. icing it's almost like a candy bar. I could say if I was craving a candy bar, I would just eat a power crunch and it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So see, we find ways without having to do the other things. So we did that. And then when do you eat again? Uh, dinner, probably around 5, 30, 6 o'clock. Okay. What's a typical dinner? Typical dinner. There's a lot of different things I'll eat, but you know, salmon's a big one. I'll eat have chicken. I'll have, and then on the side, we'll eat just like, side of veggies which is a lot of different things i like fajita veggies yeah. um yeah rice with my chicken and there's a lot of different things you can do with it so and then um you eat at chipotle sometimes so what was one of the tips that i had you try because most people don't know this tip get the oil based um the oil based salad uh, dressing salad dressing that's what it is and you'll put it on there and it tastes amazing and it's healthy for you yeah Yes. It's crazy because most people, I, I, my husband did it once. He's, I was like, that's my dressing. And he mm -hmm. put it on his burrito. Yep. And let me tell you, he doesn't chintz on his burrito. It is very good. I will recommend that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just something different. Because let me tell you, when I go in there and they don't have that, I almost walk out because mm -hmm. I go, uh, it does not taste the same. And I get the fita and the salad and yep. the chicken and it does not taste the same. So it, it's a lot about taste buds, right? And a lot of small things. All right. And then do you have a snack? Do you do anything after dinner? Um, yeah. So after dinner, you know, it's all about timing on the protein. So it depends on if I'll eat protein or not after dinner. But I'll usually have, you know, a couple of different things. We'll have uh popcorn, homemade popcorn, which is always it's it it's healthy. Yeah. Um and then um maybe a protein shake depending on the day. Um time of day when you go to bed mm -hmm. that type of thing so for viewers out there if you heard him he started off with 169 pounds of lean weight so he yes. made a minimum of 169 grams of protein a day which is a heck of a lot for especially for uh kids out there listening that don't even weigh 169 pounds because you were weighing over 200 pounds you were not 169 because when people hear that they're like oh he's weighing 169 no that's not total weight that's lean weight I weighed about 210 with 169 pounds of lean yeah. muscle. And now he's 215, but 189. One, yes. Yes. You guys, and he'll be, he'll put on that next floor and that most guys can put on about 20 pounds of lean weight a year. Yep. And he started in October and you know, our goal is he keeps on going and that's how you do it. Now with the protein, like he keeps mentioning, he's a good steward because you can only absorb so much protein. So yes. we take that roughly minimum 169 and divide that by five or six times a day because your body can only absorb so much and i think that's another misconception especially in football is yes. 
well, if I'm not gaining lean weight or weight, I must need more protein. And at some point you don't need more protein. Yep. Cause the body won't even do anything with it. Yep. Can't store it. Won't use it. See, he even knows that he can take my job. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? He might be the next sports performance nutritionist out there or dietitian. All right. What are some of the things that you felt the testing has helped you in this process? Like the bod pod and the muscle sound, how has that helped? Um, it really keeps me on track to be honest. Um, it helps me, um, just, you know, decide what the following weeks I need to do and, uh, all that. And then we do this thing where it tracks the fuel in your legs, which has helped me a ton because I was empty. Uh, I had no fuel in my legs and I was feeling like my legs were heavy and I just couldn't move very good which decided I needed to eat more calories, which yep. eating more calories has helped my performance and how I feel a ton. Yeah. A ton. Because it was interesting because we've been working together for since October. And then we had one, sometimes when the fuel is low, that you guys are going to start to grow. And then, you know, you came back and we're like, oh my gosh, it was low. I go, oh, we are, he was already eating about 4,000. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, okay, we need at least 45. Yep. Yeah and and a little bit more than that just to now get the fuel back in the muscle you guys you gain if you're doing more you go through more fuel if you grow you go through fuel the more muscle you have now you have to go through more fuel and then you're trying to gain more muscle so it's a moving target it's just when and i don't even know when sometimes that's yeah. why i like doing the testing because um we want to gain the right weight and we want to keep them fast and strong all right um and then you know, what kind of tips would you like to give athletes out there that's considering maybe adding sports nutrition and testing to their training? I would say definitely do it. Um, it's helped me a ton. It's given me a lot of tips and uh, just advice on what to do, uh, what to eat, how to how to perform better. Like there's been um, times where when I'm feeling like I don't have much fuel, she'll give me a supplement or you know, a little drink that will, um, you know, boost that performance really quickly. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that she's done for me to, um, you know, improve my performance and improve my nutrition and it's helped a ton. And then what would you like, what advice would you like to give parents out there? How could they help their athlete be successful? Um, you know, just keep them on track, uh, definitely provide them with the things that they need to, um, you know, succeed and become the athlete that they they need to be my parents have been great at that with uh keeping me on track and providing me with the right things because you know i get confused sometimes too and then you know they'll help me out and they'll figure it out sometimes for me as well so i mean yeah it's just good to yeah have that support yes. it's a learning pro it's a it's a learning process you're not going to get it all at once mm -hmm. just learning what foods do and when and we still get to have fun yeah. but we but like he mentioned, a lot of times athletes are, why you crave things is a lot of times you're not eating enough. And then yeah. if you're not eating enough of the right things, then your body is craving food. And then we tend to go towards those things that maybe aren't as ideal. And, yeah. um, and you know, uh, what other, what I would like to, one other thing, how have you been able, you've kind of touched upon it to balance your food likes, mm -hmm. you know, and your food, you know, with what we what I had set out for you as a guideline on the menu that I had put together. Well, how have you been able to balance that with foods that you know aren't ideal? How do you fit it into your weekly schedule? Um, how do yeah. you balance that? I think a big thing was when I was eating a ton of bad things in the beginning, uh, it was like I would always eat it. So I'd always crave it. And that's what I would want. And the more that I started to eat healthier and better foods, the less I would like honestly want it. Like after that, like two weeks, like breaking bad habits and all that stuff was just, it was just a big, um, one big thing that helped me like not, you know, have it as much, but you know, a couple times a week, uh, some, something like, like, um, I'm not even sure. Like I'll eat out and just have, you know, a cheat meal, like cheat meals are big. Um, it keeps me motivated, you know, so cheat meals, they're fine. They won't hurt you every now and then. Yeah, that's how it's called life. Yeah. It's called moderation. Have it once or twice a week. Have some fun things in yeah. there daily. If I didn't have my cheat meals, I don't I don't think I'd be on the same pace that I've been at because, you know, you just can't stay motivated without it. So 
cheat meals have been big on my yeah on my success and you know what it's it's called life yeah. right yeah. and you're also walking testimonial uh that you don't have to be perfect and you still can get great results yes you know yes. if somebody thinks they have to do this perfectly it's 100 percent wrong mm -hmm. on that you know even even high-end olympic pro i say 90 percent. but my goodness you get 4,000 to 4,500 calories, 10% is 450 calories of fun times yep. nine or yep. times nine. Holy cow. Times seven, yep. you know, cause there's seven days in a week. Yeah. So if you start doing everything the right way, then the body has what it needs. Yes. Wonderful. All right. So I'm going to play a game with you, kiddo. All right. It's called tell me your favorites. Okay. So I'm just going to ask like through food groups and stuff, what your favorite protein and stuff and like that oh, yeah. so yeah, yeah. we try to get this done in 60 seconds or less but i've never stopped somebody so because oh, yeah. this is what people it's fun yeah. all right you ready yeah okay let me turn my turn my clock on all right micah what is your favorite protein my favorite protein uh steak what is your favorite fruit uh strawberry what is your favorite non-starchy vegetable um Celery. 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 There you go. That's yep. Okay. What is your favorite healthy fat? Healthy fat. Olive oil. Olive oil? Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite grain or carb or starch? Um bread. 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 All right. Now the fun ones. What is your favorite healthy pre-practice or pre-game snack? Mm, probably grilled chicken. Okay. What is your favorite healthy pregame meal? Uh, grilled chicken sandwich. <laughs> he has more than that, folks, but okay, got it. Yeah. Now, what is your favorite cheat or freebie snack? Cheat snack? Ooh. Um, <laughs> Too many to pick from. Yeah, probably uh, chips and cheese. Okay. What is your favorite uh, freebie or treat meal? Um... I definitely go from like some El Caporal. Um and what do you eat there? Uh some rice with some chicken and some cheese sauce on there. Yeah, the queso and or the, cheese sauce. And fajitas, yeah. Fajita, yeah. Fajita veggie. You go with uh chips too. Oh uh, yeah, you got to. Yeah, there you go. Sure. See, this is all the fun and part. I wrap it up in a tortilla. Uh -huh. mm, so, mm, good. so good. See, I, it's always easy to talk about the things we love. We just yes. our whole demeanor changes. Yes. All right. What is your favorite post recovery snack? Post recovery snack, um, chocolate milk. Got it. Yep, good. Twenty twenty four ounces. Yep. Get the carbs and the protein in. Chocolate milk. He it's did good. it. He survived the game. Good job, buddy. That's good. All right. So, in closing, is there any final words you would like to tell the viewers out there? It's about what you're eating, the timing, and the quality of what you're eating. Not about stuffing your face with some bad foods. Like the stigma is out there. I think that's been big for me. That's been big words there for me. I love it. Yeah. All right, Micah. So be like Micah instead of be like Mike. We're going to be like Micah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. And um, keep an eye out for him because we already got a game plan when this year's over. We already got a game plan for the next year, putting on a, another 20 pounds of lean weight. And again, you don't have to be perfect. Make small goals. Set some planning goals and some guidelines and go at it. All right, you guys, this is Don Weatherwax, the proud owner of Sports Nutrition to Go and Don Weatherwax's Sports Nutrition Academy. Have a great and healthy day.